Today we're making honey, I mean maple cake. <laughs> Who knew that the signature flavor of the Medivic or the honey cake actually is derived from bicarbonate soda, which in baking in the biscuits reacts to create a honeycomb flavor. Makes sense, right? This is a two to three day process because we preferably want to be making the cream the day before or in the morning, then assembling the next day or in the afternoon. And then we want to leave it in the fridge for one more day for something quite magical to happen. And this is the cream is going to set and moisture is going to move from the cream to the biscuit, resulting in this complex layered cake that is rich and indulgent, but light at the same time. It's a lot of work, but absolutely worth it for that something or someone special. And it's just one of those flavors that always has you coming back for more. Let's make it. So we're gonna start by adding our golden syrup and maple syrup to a saucepan. We're gonna cook these for about three to four minutes until it's really thick, we've evaporated some moisture and caramelized the sugar. You now it's done when it has a consistency that closer resembles honey. On the heat, we add our plant-based milk and just mix everything until it's dissolved. And then we can add our muscovado or brown sugar, a splash, of orange blossom water, just for a floral aromatic flavor. And then we'll add our coconut oil. It can be solid because the heat from our mixture will melt the coconut oil. And just mix that together. But then I'm gonna pour it into either a blender or a jug so I can use a hand blender. Use something like this. So I've actually halved the amount of the mixture that I'm making for this demonstration because I've already pre-prepared the mix and I didn't want to waste ingredients, but this is half the amount. So a large, uh, a regular size blender or a um, larger size Nutribullet will, will mix this really well. So either way, we hand blender or a powerful blender you need for this because we need to create an emulsion. If, you have a, if you're using a powerful blender, then it might only take 30 seconds, but with a smaller blender, like a hand blender, uh, it might take just a little bit longer, up to a minute. When we look at the mixture on the back of a spoon, we should look at a reflection that is flawless with no oily streaks. This is a sign that we have a great emulsion. I we just want to pour this in a nice thin layer, not more than two or three centimeters thick, onto a shallow flat tray, and place a layer of cling film or plastic wrap on top. We just want to press that to the surface to make sure that no skin forms. Then we put this in the fridge. Preferably you want to be preparing this the night before or early in the morning, because it needs at least four to five hours to chill down properly. Prepare our maple dough. We're just going to preheat uh, our pan. We want to preheat it nice and hot because we're going to make a dry caramel. This is essentially a caramel where we start by heating the pan and we add a little at a time until it caramelizes and then we add more and more, about tablespoon by tablespoon, until it's fully caramelized. So you can see it's, uh, it's starting to melt in the pan. Add a bit more. We don't want it to burn. We're just going to gently stir it to get the sugar to melt. It's going to create like a wet sand appearance. and start to turn to caramel. So we can add bit, bit by bit more. Make sure your spatula is heat proof because 
We're talking about temperatures in excess of 200 degrees Celsius. If you don't feel confident doing, if you don't feel confident preparing this, or if your camera is burning, then just add about 50 grams of water and then cook it to a caramel by letting it boil away until it starts to turn an amber color. So once that caramel is fully melted, there are no lumps. Please be very careful when you're stirring a hot caramel. Um, this like caramel can give you really serious burns. So we don't want to do anything that might um, cause the caramel to splash or leave the bowl. So just very gentle, gen very gentle movements. So our caramel is beautiful and a nice deep golden color. This is where we're going to get a lot of kind of caramelly flavor in this cake. So it's bubbling, I'm going to turn the heat off and then very slowly trickle in the water. Now this is going to spit and bubble. So we never want to add a lot at a time. We're just adding little bit by bit. We're adding little bit by bit to deglaze. Make sure your pan is big enough. Don't use a tiny pan. And then now we have a lovely dark caramel syrup. And then when it's cooled down enough, we can add the rest of the water. We can add the maple syrup, the vinegar, and our oil. We're now going to let this mixture sit aside until it reaches 50 degrees Celsius. For the next step, our syrup is cooled down to around 50 degrees. I'm adding the bicarbonate soda and the salt to the flour and just gently mixing them to distribute the baking powder. Now this can be done in a stand mixer with a dough hook, but I'm just going to show you how it can be done by hand. And then we're going to add our syrup in giving the whisk before I add it in. I'm going to use a spatula to just keep stirring this until the dough forms. It doesn't take a long time to mix this, just as it gets thicker, you can switch to your hands. So I've incorporated most of my flour. I'm just going to switch to my hands and press everything together. So just using a kind of a squeezing and turning motion because I want every last bit of flour to be combined. Turn this onto the bench. Now there is a lot of sugar in this dough so it is, it can be a little bit sticky but I'm just going to knead it. Until it is a smooth dough. I need, I need eight rounds for this cake, but I'm going to cut it into six to make it easier to roll and then uh, use the offcuts to re-roll. So I'm cutting this in, oop, I'm cutting this in half, then into six, and then I'm just going to 
roll it in a little bit of flour. Not too much. And then roll it one way. Now it's really important that with this dough that we're constantly uh, letting it relax because if you go to cut it and it's still tight and still shrinking, we end up with uh, oval shapes. So we really want to make sure. So I always start in the middle and roll outwards and then in the middle again and roll backwards. So I just want quite a thin dough. We want these to be about 1 to 1.5 millimeters thick. So use a little bit of flour as you need it. I'm just going to set that aside to shrink. So our first lot of six are done. I'm just going back to some old ones and just gonna let that relax before I trim it. So you see they do shrink back quite a bit and end up being reasonably thick pieces. So don't be afraid to roll and re-roll them if you need to and let them relax. Going back to our original piece, our very first piece of dough, I'm going to dock it with a fork. This is going to create some holes for the syrup to be absorbed in and ensure a nice even puffing of the dough. I'm just going to press these, press the tart ring down to get a nice round cut and then pressing the offcuts together because I'm going to re-roll them. So that's our first disc. If you have nice big sheet trays you can squeeze two per tray. So I'm going to bake the first one straight away at 180 degrees for six to nine minutes. And then for the final two pieces, I'm just going to press all these off cuts together. So this is why we don't want to use too much flour. If we use too much flour, we can dry out the dough and then it becomes really hard to bring the pieces back together again. Those very last pieces of offcuts, we're also going to keep and bake for, to make a crumb for the decoration. So I'm working pretty quickly and this dough is feeling a little bit tight, doesn't really want to roll out. So I'm just going to let it sit for 10 minutes They should, coming out, they should come out of the oven looking slightly puffed, still have a bit of flex in them. I mean, don't pick up hot things, but they should still have a bit of flex to them. We don't want them to be like dry biscuits. With the final bits, I have the offcuts. I just want to keep them nice and spread out so they... But this time, we do want to dry these out and bake them to a crisp. So spread them out nice and as evenly as possible without uh, letting them sit on top of each other and then back in the oven, this time for about 10 to 12 minutes. Mm -hmm. 
So we now need to soak our biscuits. They've cooled down, but there's a tiny bit of warmth left in them. And I've just stacked them to keep them from completely drying out. So to make our syrup over medium heat, we're adding water, golden syrup, maple syrup, and caster sugar. I'm just going to bring this to a simmer. Now that our syrups come to a boil, I'm just going to proceed to then pour the syrup, the boiling syrup, over each biscuit and then let it collect underneath. And then I'll just transfer it to a new tray while I do each piece. Another thing you can do is pour your syrup into a tray and then just press each sheet into your um, syrup, coating it a couple of times before you put it on the, on the tray, before you put it on the paper. So to whip the cream, I highly recommend a stand mixer because it takes a tiny bit longer than normal. We want to whip it to a nice stable peak and I'm going to put one nice big dollop in the middle and use the palette knife to gently work my way around. So you see the um, the biscuits have almost dried up while as they've absorbed all that moisture from the syrup. So we're just gonna keep this in the fridge overnight to really set up. Tomorrow we'll unmold it Finish it with a tiny bit more cream and put the crumb on. To finish the maple layer cake, I'm going to release it from the tin. Now, if you've built this freehand with no tin, which is perfectly doable, um, you don't need a blowtorch to release it. We're just going to release the tin gently. So I have taken the the crumb, the excess off sheet off cuts. Now I've just broken up the off cuts that I've baked. We're going to blend this to a nice fine powder. Mmm, smells bicarby, but that is where the flavour of this cake comes from. over to mask the cake and fill any gaps.
Now we want to press the crumb up the sides of the cake. Bit of a messy job. There we have it, our honey, I mean, maple cake. 